On today's episode of The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, we're going to be taking a look at the object selection tool inside of Lightroom Classic. This is a really powerful tool. I'm going to show you some really interesting things that you can do to simplify your whole editing process in Lightroom. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you for joining me again today. Today, I'll be looking at the object selection tool in Lightroom Classic. It's a really powerful tool. You'll find it in the masking panel inside of Lightroom. To show you how really cool this tool is, I'll be working on this image today. Now, I have this image edited, what you're seeing on the screen before you right now. This is what it looked like before, and this is what it looks like after. Just about everything here was done. I think everything really was done with the object selection tool using the masking panel in Lightroom. What's really nice about the masking panel in Lightroom is that we can add to the selection. We can subtract from the selection. We can use a brush tool. We can use the object selection tool to remove things from the object that we selected. Really cool things that we can do. So sit back, relax, and let's jump into the object selection tool. I went ahead and reset the image so we could start from scratch. Now you're going to find the object selection tool inside of the masking panel. So if you click this icon right here, you'll open up the masking panel. Now the first thing I want to do is grab the object selection tool and right up here at the top we have objects. Now of course we can select subject, sky, or background. Let me try to select the subject first. Now you can see it's picking up way too much so that's not going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete this mask. All you need to do is come here, see the three dots, come down and click on delete mask one. And now let's grab the object selection tool. So just click on it. Now, there's two ways that you can go about making uh, object selection. You can use this button here, and this lets you make a rectangle selection. And then you could use this brush, which lets you actually paint on the selection. But we're going to use the rectangle. And what I'll do is I'll just make a selection. I want to get the entire vase with the flowers inside of them. Now, I want to start out by just adjusting the leaves of the flowers, anything that's green, and also the uh, stems that are in this vase also. So what we'll do is use something called an intersection. Now, to get that intersection, what you need to do is, right now we're in object one, see the three dots, click this, and you could go with intersect with, and what we would want to do, intersect with color range, because I only want to choose the green leaves. A shortcut for that is, and this is a good one, write this one down. Hold your option or all key down and watch right here when I hold my option or all key down. Intersect comes up. That is golden, so mark that one down. So we'll just click on intersect as I'm holding my alt or option key down. And then what we want to do is choose color range. Now right now you notice everything that is in this magenta tone is selected. And that's because I have a magenta color here. Now, if you click on this, you can change that to any color you want. Or if it's too strong, you can pull its opacity back so you can really see what you're doing. So I go and alter this from time to time as I'm working. Different images look better with different colors as overlays. And you can show the overlay or if you uncheck it, you can shut the overlay off. And that all comes in handy sometimes. You don't always want that overlay on. But what we'll do is... You see that eyedropper tool? I'm going to pick a color that represents the green, maybe right here. And when I do that, magically, it masks out all of the flowers. Isn't that cool? And you'll notice it's picking up the stems in the water. Now, there is a refined color range right here, and you can see that's the color it's chosen. So I can drag this to the right and pick up more of that color or drag it to the left and tighten it up. And I think maybe, and I'm watching these leaves up in here. Make sure I get all those in, maybe like that. And it's missing a couple little things here, but we'll fix that and I'll show you what we can do. I need to add this into the selection, so I'm gonna click on Add. And we have choices here of different ways we can add. This time, I think I'm gonna go with an object selection again. And this time I'll use the brush. And then I use my right and left bracket keys to adjust the brush size, so any area that it's missed, I can paint in. Now, once you lift the brush, you'll have to re-add again, and I'll show you what I mean, but I'm going to paint this area right here. The artificial intelligence picks that up. Now, in order for me to paint in these other areas that it's missed, I have to click Add, and I'll show you. So we're going to go and click on the Object Selection Tool again, 
and I'll just paint this. Now, once I lift the brush, I have to hit add again. I'm going to go ahead and click add again and click on object selection and I'll add this section. I'm going to go ahead and fix up the other areas so you don't have to watch me do all this. It doesn't take that long to do and it's not that hard to do, but you get a beautiful selection. I went ahead and added in all the areas that were missed in the mask and I was looking for a shortcut to see if I could add multiple areas at once and I couldn't find any information on that. I don't know if you can do it or not. If you can't do it, I think Lightroom needs to add that in a future update. But if anybody knows of a way of doing it, please let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to know how to do that because that would really speed things up. Now that we have the mask created, let me go ahead and lighten up the leaves. So what we're going to do is come here to Tone. We'll open up Tone. And I'm going to take the shadow slider and start to drag it to the right just to lighten up those leaves to right about there. And I think I'll go to color as well and pull back on the saturation just a little bit. They seem a little bit oversaturated. And now if we click on this eye on the mask, we can see here's the before and here's the after. So we're off to a good start. The next thing I want to do is on this candle, I want to lighten up the darker areas a little wee bit. And we'll use an object selection tool for that. So what we'll do is come and click on create a new mask. Let's grab the object selection tool and I'll use the uh, rectangle again and click on it first and just make a selection right like this. Now, if we look at this selection with the magenta overlay, we can see it's selected the wax of the candle and the flame as well as this label here. I don't want that. So what we're going to do is subtract. So click on subtract. This time I'm going to use luminance range to select that because those are lighter areas and I'm going for the darker areas. So let's click on luminance range and see the eyedropper tool comes up. Now we could come in here and like say, let's click on the wax right here and see how it removes it. Now it's missed this area right here, but we could take care of that. We could come over to luminance range and drag this slider to the left and feather this selection out and include that area that's not quite as light. This feathers that adjustment and I think right there looks good. And now all we need to do is come to tone and let's take that shadow slider and start to drag it to the right and see that we're only lightening up the darker areas of the candle to maybe somewhere around there. Now here is the before and here is the after. The next thing I want to do is lighten up the glass vase. So let's click create a new mask. Let's grab the object selection tool again, and I'm going to use the rectangle and select this vase like this. Makes a great selection, but there's green in there from the stems that I don't want to lighten up. So let's subtract those out. Let's click on subtract color range, right? Because they're green. And let's click on some of the green area that's right here and see how that subtracts right out of there. And I think I have a really good selection, but if we needed to, we could use this slider to refine that green stem if we needed to. And I think right there looks really good. Now, all I need to do is lighten it up. And this time, I think I'll use highlights to lighten it up. So I'm going to come to the highlight slider and just start to drag it to the right and just lighten that up a little bit somewhere around there and maybe take the exposure up slightly. I don't want to go too light on that. Here is the before. And here is the after. It's a little too strong, but I want to show you something else. You see right here on mask three, you have this amount adjustment. It's at 100%. That's where it defaults at. If your adjustment is too strong, you can drag this to the left and pull back in the opacity. Or if you want it even stronger, you can drag it to the right. So I think I'm a little too strong. So I'm going to drag it to the left just a little bit. I think to around 85%. Here is the before and here is the after and I like it. The next thing I want to do is lighten up the table a little bit. And to do that, let's create another mask. So we'll click on the plus button. Let's grab the object selection tool. This time I want to use this brush tool. So make sure you have that selected. And you don't have to be very accurate here. You can use your left and right bracket keys to make your brush larger or smaller. And I'm just going to go like this. Paint all around the edge of this image like so. Come up into here, come around, back down. We'll paint up into here. And again, you don't have to be accurate. And let's just go like that and release it and see what we get. Get a pretty nice job, but it's got this cup here and we don't want that. So we can fix that. We can subtract that cup. So let's click on subtract. 
Let's use the object selection tool to subtract it. This time we'll use the uh, rectangle tool and we'll just drag a rectangle around this cup. And look, it's gone. Isn't that cool? It's missed this area back in here. Well, I didn't even paint there. So let me go ahead and click on add and objects. And this time I'll use the brush tool again. I'll use my left bracket key, make my brush a lot smaller and just paint right across here like that. And you see how it just grabs that? It's just that simple. Now all I need to do is, let's see, let's go to, let me go to highlights and start to drag this to the right and just lighten up that table just a little bit. I think that looks good. You see how easy that is to do and how quickly you can get the job done. Now let's take a look. Here's the before and here is the after. The next thing I want to do is darken down this wooden board that the vase and the candle are sitting on. So let me add another mask. So click the plus button to create a new mask. Object selection tool again. I'm going to use the brush and let's make my brush a little bigger. I'll use the right bracket key to make it a little larger. That's too big, a little smaller than that maybe. And just paint right in here. Like I'm going to come around like this get around all the edging of it here and let's see how sloppy I can be come around this candle just like that and see what kind of selection we get well it selected the candle so not a great selection but we can fix that very simply let's go ahead and click on subtract grab the object selection tool Let's grab the rectangle tool and let's see if I can just get rid of it like this. And isn't that sweet? And that is easy. Now it's missed this little area right here. So we can subtract that. Let's click subtract object selection tool. Let's grab the brush tool and make the brush the right size. Make it a little smaller left bracket key a couple times. Drag across here, subtract that out. And there it is. Now all we need to do is make the adjustment. Let me take the shadow slider and start to drag this to the left a little bit. And let's just darken that up a little bit. See how simple and easy that is. Here's the before and here is the after. And don't forget about this amount slider. If you want it darker, you can drag this to the right. If you want it not as dark, you can drag it to the left and, you know, get the right amount that you want. Let's take a look. Here's the before and the after. Nah, it's still not quite right. I think I'll drag the amount slider to the left a little bit more and that way it'll lighten that board up just a little bit. And again, here's the before and the after. And if I wanted to, I could come to color. Maybe I want to add a little more saturation into it. So let's drag this to the right, just a little bit more saturation and maybe use the temperature slider to warm it up a little bit. Yeah, I like that a little bit warmer like that before and after. Now, the last thing I want to do is grab this cluster of flowers right here, and I just want to lighten up the white petals on them. So here's what we'll do. Let's create another mask. Let's grab the object selection tool. I'm just going to use the rectangle tool and drag a rectangle around these flowers. And let's see what kind of job. Now it's picking up way too much, but remember the intersection. Hold your Alt or Option key down and click on Intersect. And we're going to use a luminance range because we have a lot of white in here. So let's click like right here. And that's doing a pretty good job. You see how it knocks out the green. It's just picking up the white. But let's see. I'm going to take this slider and drag it over the whole way to the right. And you see that it picks up everything. Now we can even feather it. I'm going to drag this slider to the left a little bit and make sure I get all those flowers in there. Now it's also picking up the yellow. So what can we do? We can subtract. Click on subtract. And now we're going to use color range. And now we're going to select some of the yellow in there. So click on yellow and look, it takes them right out. <laughs> Isn't that great? And now let's go over to tone and let's just bump up the highlights. Not too much, but maybe right about here, I think. Let me see what happens if I pull the exposure over just a little bit. Not much, just a tiny wee bit, like about nine. And that's... That might be too much, but don't forget we have the amount slider here. Let me drag it back and then I'll just drag it to the right till it looks good. This amount slider is something that you're really going to enjoy. And I think right about there, like 86, nah, how about 82? Here is the before and here is the after. Now, if you want to see the overall before and after of all your masks, 
you can click this button right here. This will turn off your mask. Here's before and here is after. Well, there it is, everyone. That is the object selection tool, a really powerful masking tool inside of Lightroom Classic. I hope you give it a try. Hey, if you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.